Making this video when I don't feel good is all that's a great way to do with things. <coughs> I Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So, today is going to be a different type of video. This is a very, 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 very important video that normally I wouldn't do on this channel, but I feel like I'm more connected with you guys here than I am on the second channel because this would be an actual second channel video because it's not K-pop related. And this is about my actual life. But I feel more connected with you guys here than I do there because I normally just vlog over there. So, here it is. As someone who puts most of their life on the internet through YouTube videos or even just regular social media like Snapchat, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, I have a very, 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 very big secret. And I'm going to tell you it. It's going to be a little hard for me because this is something that I don't tell anybody and now I'm going to be telling you guys a bunch of strangers they don't even know but I feel like we're connected in a way that is completely impossible for me to even to tell this to my own friends and family and if they watch this video well it's all out there and I don't have to speak to them about it face to face so normally I'm a person who's full of positivity and uplifting spirits and I always like to say that to everybody that has seen my social media as you can see it on my Instagram where I always want to spread the positivity and even here when I tell you guys that you're so beautiful all the time because you are my wonderful beautiful babes and I just want you to be happy and live your life to the fullest. I'm that person who always wants to be positive and spread positive. I can't even talk right now. That's how how much I just love love. <laughs> I try to be such a positive person all the time because I hate seeing other people upset and I want them to be happy as much as I want to be happy. So I try my best. But in this secret, I'm not being exactly I'm not being exactly positive about it and it's a little hard I have body dysphoria and for those of you who don't know what body dysphoria is dysphoria is a type of internalized discomfort with oneself so dysphoria could be any type of thing that you just really, really don't like about yourself. Like you could have gender dysphoria where you are completely and utterly uncomfortable with your gender. Or you can have what I have, which is body dysphoria, where you're completely uncomfortable with inside your own body. And I am 100% completely and utterly uncomfortable with my body and of course there are things that I really really do like about myself like I just like that I'm a person who can spread positivity and make everyone smile and laugh at least I hope I do or you know that I'm a, that I have a really great personality and you know all my friends think I have a wonderful and great personality and that's okay with me and of course there's people who just genuinely don't like me for some of the aspects of myself and that's completely fine. I'm a person who has a I don't give a fuck about anything and honestly I don't care what anyone else has to say and you guys shouldn't either but it matters what I have to think about myself and what I have to say to myself and sometimes those aren't very good thoughts. My body dysphoria comes from small snippets of myself that turn into this really, really grand thing that it really shouldn't have. And it started out with the smallest things, like how I think my nose is too big, or how I hate smiling because I show off my gums too much, or the fact that I have really bushy eyebrows, or that my fingers are too short. These are the things that just started into becoming so internalized that I continue to put myself down in a way that isn't 
healthy. And eventually it inspired me hating a lot of things about my body. I have a very big problem with my weight, which is another very important part of my body dysphoria. I weigh a hundred and roughly a hundred and ten kilograms, which is about two hundred and twenty four pounds. And there's nothing that I can really try to do about that. <laughs> I try my best to to keep my weight off because I used to actually weigh two hundred and four. 50 pounds and that's something that I just genuinely hated about myself I constantly told myself that I was fat and that it was ugly and that it was just a horrible way to live but on the other part of my personality I was like I don't care if I'm gonna be fat I'm gonna be fat but deep down I knew that if I just let it sit like that on the surface it would crush me to the point where I wouldn't want to be seen by anybody. And now that I've lost roughly 25 pounds, I feel a little bit better about myself, but knowing that it's still there doesn't make me feel any better. Which brings me to my next point of... my eating habits and my eating struggles. I don't eat very often. And at least I don't try to eat very often. There are things that I purposely don't eat because I feel like they're gonna make me sick and so I just don't eat them. And there are things that I just can't stand to eat. So it limits what I want to eat and how much of it that I do eat. So there's a lot of, there's a big list of foods that I will not, absolutely will not put into my body and it's just something that I can't do because as soon as I do taste it or smell it, I get sick. And that list is super, super long and I'm not going to put it out there because it's just normal foods that everybody else would enjoy eating and it's just something that I don't do. So there's that. And then there's the portion size. I don't eat a lot ever. I went through a really bad portion in my life where I didn't eat anything for a whole entire week and ended up having to be put into the hospital. Because I didn't eat anything for an entire week and it just made me absolutely sick and I don't even know what possessed me to do so. And then I ended up having a very sharp pain in my gallbladder and ended up having to be taken to the hospital where they thought that I might have to do something to my gallbladder, like either remove it or do something else. Of course, it was just a false alarm and I am perfectly 100% okay now, but I have to constantly watch out for my gallbladder just in case something like that happens again. So the next thing that has to do with my body dysphoria is Sometimes I have to cover up mirrors and not look at them because it makes me uncomfortable. And you might not be able to see that because if you look at my Instagram, if you look at my Twitter, I have a lot of pictures of myself that show me smiling and happy and all these other things, but really it's not like that. I take pictures in spots of confidence. And if I'm not feeling confident, I don't look in a camera and I don't look in mirrors and I will cover them up so that I won't be tempted to make myself feel bad. And this happens a lot and nobody really knows it. No one can really tell from my quirky personality and my smile and everything else and it's just shocking to actually be able to tell someone this side of my life and to think that it's with a bunch of people they don't know who might be suffering from the same thing it's unbelievable so
so lastly I want to tell you that how I live and continue to go day by day with having body dysphoria having body dysphoria doesn't mean that I can't be happy and that I can't love myself because I genuinely do I think that I'm a really good person inside and outside and I just try to make everyone feel as good as I possibly can and that's why I like spreading positivity I mean my tagline is smile brightly and with love so you know that's just what happens but when there's points in my life where I get so upset that I look the way I do and then I just internalize it and think about how awful of a person that I look and feel I try to think about something that makes me happier something that can take my mind away from these internalized feelings that I have for myself and normally that's my friends my family and my music and when I say my music I don't mean music that I make because I am not an artist in any way shape or form I'm talking about the music that I listen to to make me feel better about myself and that's genuinely most of the time <laughs> k-pop k-pop just makes me feel a lot better about myself and whenever I feel feel <laughs> whenever I hear music I just like to get up and dance and so I dance I dance too dancing makes me feel better about myself it always has and it probably always will so when I feel really bad I just turn on my one of my favorite songs and it literally I have so many of them that it could be any songs that I feel like I like to the point where people would get annoyed to have how many times I play that song currently right now my favorite song is boom boom by momoland so I listen to that all the time and I do the dance and I get so high for for Jewy and I just I don't know that song just makes me feel so good about myself And sometimes I think about how all these other, you know, idols or even American idols who have struggle with, like, weight and stuff like that. And the people who think that they have to be 100% absolutely perfect. And I think about how they struggle with things in their everyday lives. And it makes me feel a little bit better about myself because even famous people struggle with these things. And normal people struggle with these things too. So we're not exactly that much different. We're all human beings in this world and we all need some type of love and understanding and just sometimes a big old hug, you know what I mean? <laughs> and another thing with living with body dysphoria is that it comes and goes like anxiety does or depression or any other kind of uh, mental disorder, mental illness, anything like that. I mean, it comes in spurts, it comes in phases, it comes in terms, if I want to say. And I don't always feel 100% bad about myself, and when I do, I just kind of close off a little bit. But no one can really tell because I don't like showing that side of me because it's not a good side for me or anyone else to see. And so it's probably why no one knew about it. Not until now, at least. I'm never going to be able to 100% fully cope with having body dysphoria because I know that I, I'll always feel bad about how I look and it probably will never ever go away, but I try to go every day of my life with the best intentions and a good smile, even though I hate my smile. <laughs> and I'll continue to live my life even with having something as concerning as this. <sighs> So anyway, this is just a big story of my life that I wanted you all to know and I wanted you just to see how even though I am a happy person most of the time, things get me down and I want you to know that if you have something that gets you down that you're not alone and you know there's so many other people that probably have or are affected by what you are dealing with and I want you to know that you can share your stories with anybody as long as you feel comfortable and safe with them. Don't ever hide something that makes you feel depressed or gives you anxiety or you know whatever if you have any other type of thing that bothers you in your daily life try to find someone that you trust and that you genuinely care about that you can talk to them with because i know there are things out there in this world that scare you deep 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 down and that you will never ever share with anybody but it'll probably make you feel better anyway that is the end of this video i hope you guys <laughs> enjoyed it and if you did please 
please give me a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe you can also check out all my social media linked down in the description below and you can follow the second channel where i show you my life minus the k-pop all right you beautiful babes i'll see you in the next video Hanyang. Oh,